in. Today's project with Sean and Jason is a hovercraft. Yay. Yay. What we're going to do is take this big old piece of scrap wood, which we got for a buck at Lowe's, thanks to Jason's amazing bargaining skills, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to cut it into a circle. Then we're going to attach a piece of plastic sheeting underneath, secure the middle of it with this to make an inflatable donut. We'll drill a hole through here, put a leaf blower blowing into that hole, put holes on the underside of the plastic, and hopefully after that we'll have a working hovercraft. So uh, join us while we uh, probably cut our fingers off. This hovercraft will have no propulsion. We're not going to have any kind of leaf blower or anything, any fan to push around. So we'll just, it'll mostly be manual pushing on this concrete slab right here, but it should be a good proof of concept for Mark II when we have, you know, cannon batteries and lasers. You know what they say about men with big tape measures. Ooh, can I video tape? Lots of stand up. Okay, so this is what we do. We've got the string tied to a two foot diameter, or two foot length, radius rather. And I've got the uh, Sharpie in the hole on the end. And we just basically walk the string around here and run out of space. Hey, planning. So that's how we make a more or less more perfect circle. <laughs> so now we just cut around that. All right, this is the bit where we lose digits. We're uh, going ahead and cutting the circle that Jason has so cleverly traced out. And away we go. This is the four foot diameter circle for the um, for the hovercraft, and we're going to be start drilling holes and punching the uh, little punch throughs for the um, for crazy people to stand on for the uh, leaf blower to go in. So here I'm cutting the hole for the uh, leaf blower, for the end of the leaf blower. And what's going to happen is that we've got instead of the leaf blower sitting like this, which a lot of plans on the internet have, and it's a little bit awkward. We bought this little dollar seventy five cent two inch diameter job here and it's going to go in here we're going to duct tape it so we will use a, lose a little bit of flow here and it's just going to sit like this so we think it's a little bit stronger and it's going to you know not wobble back and forth as much and not be as much of a problem all right so me and my manly pinking shears have just finished cutting a circular bit of the plastic sheeting you can see we laid the disc down on top of it to get a rough idea of how big it should be our next job will be to fold the sheeting over and secure it on this side so as to make our cushion underneath. And we'll secure it with staples and duct tape and super glue and Play-Doh and used chewing gum Ew. and the viscous power of peanut butter. <laughs> Not how it works there, Liam. Now I am duct taping around the edges because you want to form an airtight seal so that can't happen again. And we're just going to duct tape all the way around the edges here. Perfect. This is just a coffee can lid. So we're uh, drilling holes in the plastic sheeting now for the air to escape underneath the hovercraft and we'll be doing about six of these. It's probably better to do this with scissors but we're men and any excuse we have to use power tools is a good one. So we've got the uh, plastic sheeting attached, holes drilled, and we're ready for a test inflation. Let's see how this thing works. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so about two hours is all it took, which makes it one of our shortest projects to date. It's the brand new Numos Asunder which roughly translated is uh, broken wind. And this was actually one of our cheapest projects too. It was only about uh, 10 bucks in supplies yeah. since, uh, since Jason's managed to horn swoggle them out of some valuable board for a very minimal price. Lowe's had a piece of scrap sitting around <clears> and I begged the guy and he let it, how about a dollar? So I said, yeah. And we already had the leaf blower, which normally would run you about 30 bucks uh, for a real cheap one. It's electric, which means you're gonna be limited 
to the length of your extension cord. If it was gas, you'd be able to go off down the street if you wanted to. Um, it was fairly easy to do, and uh, we were also both surprised that you actually pull the plastic fairly tightly as you go around, leave just a little bit of slack, but you don't have to leave a big cushion underneath because just whatever slack is in the uh, plastic itself is enough to pillow it. Yep, so now we're ready for the first manned flight of the Numos Asunder! Woo! Cheers! This is for our homies. Mm. There you go. I thought it's right. To the first flight of the Numos Asunder! <laughs> oh! Oh, I think we had a blowout! So our first attempt went horribly awry. Our, uh, our plastic sheeting was only 3 mil, whereas uh, 4 to 6 mil is recommended. So we had blowouts on the side and on the bottom. We've reinforced all those points with duct tape now, and we're also going to put a new uh, peanut butter jar lid on the bottom to hold this in place to help be sure we get the toroidal donut shape inflation happening properly. So this stuff was only, it was only, what, 3 mil? Yeah. And when we were at the hardware store, we saw some um, shower pan liner you can pick up in the in the plumbing section, and that was um, oh, it was probably 12 mil. It was really thick, and that would have been a lot better. Um, it was about six bucks per linear foot, and it would have taken about twenty dollars to do the, the skirt on this. So yeah, we just, we opted for the cheaper stuff. But if you're if you're if money is no object in your hovercraft, this, the thicker stuff is definitely the way to go. One, two, three. Attempt number two was much more successful. We were able to make several circuits of the slab. The, uh, the cushion stayed inflated. We had one minor blowout on the side this time, but overall it was a much better attempt than the last one. We're going to apply some more duct tape. Go for attempt number three. Definitely recommend duct taping around the edge when, uh, when you do yours, just to make it stronger because this edge right here tends to rip through the thinner material. Three, two, one. <laughs> Notice, if you work for or are related to someone who works for Child Protective Services, please do not view this video. <laughs> that was great. We need to launch her in the trebuchet next. The life of our project is measured by the size of our duct tape roll, and we're getting to the end. <laughs> A 
alas, poor Numos Asunder had a good dozen rides to her. You can see we just duct taped over duct tape and eventually she just blew too many holes and couldn't do it anymore. Ow. So lessons learned from our prototype here. Number one, thicker material. <laughs> Number two, have lots of lots duct tape Lots of handy. duct tape. Um, also might be a good idea to get some, some, uh, some of that uh, pipe insulation to go around the edge because it tended to rip along the edge a lot right here. Yeah, we were thinking if you put that on the wood before you wrap the plastic around it, it'll help keep your plastic from tearing there. Yeah. So uh, reinforcing it with duct tape also is a, yeah. uh, an important consideration. Also make the pillow a little bit bigger, so a little bit more slack when you first put it on because um, the pillow was kind of small for two fat butts here. I still disagree. I think a smaller pillow would work better than a I disagree. No, I want to I build a new one. Further experimentation is needed on that front. Yeah. So that's uh, Numos Asunder. So, awesome! Uh, Mad Science Project number four. Four, I think. Well done. Well done. <laughs>